Lincoln Before and After the Civil War No other president's face is arguably more recognizable than Abraham Lincoln's. With sharp, carved-out cheekbones, tuzzled dark hair, and melancholic eyes, his face can be found all over the world, including in pennies and five-dollar bills. But for decades, historians have studied the dramatic changes that Lincoln's face suffered during his presidency. A series of photographs that show Lincoln over the four-year-long war against the Confederate States of America and his struggles to unify the country after the fight reveals how his physical appearance dramatically changed. The photographs begin in 1860, during his first inauguration, and end in 1865, a few months before his untimely passing. Some of them show a noticeable change in the interval from November 1863 to February 1864 with an ill-looking Lincoln. This has been attributed to a smallpox infection. According to John Hay, one of his secretaries, Lincoln changed, quote, so gradually that it would be impossible to say when the change began. But he was, in mind, body, and nerves, a very different man at the second inauguration in March 1865 from the one who had taken the oath in 1861. Although the president continued to have the same cordial and generous spirit, it was said that his laughter became less frequent year by year, and he seemed to age quite rapidly as more lines kept appearing on his now hollow face. Ultimately, Lincoln, the man with the most recognizable face in modern American history, was, like all the soldiers of the Civil War, a man of many masks. Evgeny Stepanovich Kuptiev The Andrei Pozdev Museum in southern Russia honors native artists and is filled with art from painters from all over the former Soviet Union. Inside the facilities are two pictures showcased side by side, depicting the physical toil that four years of relentless war takes on young soldiers. Evgeny Stepanovich Kobitev, born on Christmas Day of 1910 in a small Soviet village, was a natural-born artist who dreamed of pursuing his passion for portrait and landscape painting. In 1936, he finally became a student at the prestigious Kiev State Art Institute in Ukraine. Four years later, he graduated with honors from the academy and was ready to begin a long artistic career. However, when Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, Kobitev had no choice but to delay his dreams. After enlisting for the Red Army, his regiment fought a fierce battle to protect the town of Pripyat. Kobitev was wounded and captured, and taken to the infamous Karl Pitt concentration camp as a prisoner of war. The soldier remained in the dilapidated and half-rotten prison camp for two years, continually drenched in sweat and crammed in small barracks with hundreds of soldiers. With little to no food available on the grounds, the hunger and stress caused the Russian painter's young and supple face to slim down, giving him wrinkles and sinking his eyes into his skull. In 1943, Comrade Kobitev escaped captivity and rejoined the army. For the remainder of the war, he fought throughout Ukraine, Moldova, Poland, and Germany. When the conflict ended in 1945, he was awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union Medal for his excellent military service. However, the Russian High Command refused to give him the ultimate Victory Over Germany Award, as he had been a prisoner of war. After World War II, Evgeny Stepanovich Kobitev continued to be fond of art and was elected as city council, ensuring people from his city got access to cultural activities until his passing in 1973. His transformation would be forever immortalized in these photographs. Before and After Fighting November 18th, 1918 marked the ending of World War I, a conflict like no other the world had ever experienced. Although many soldiers were traumatized by the violence they witnessed, some of them were also left with physical impairments that would continue to haunt them. Located on the outskirts of Washington, D.C., Walter Reed Hospital was the nation's leading facility for treating returning World War I soldiers. Opened in 1909, the facilities offered the most cutting-edge care for veterans, giving them a chance at life and recovery. When photographers arrived at war hospitals such as Walter Reed to capture the essence of post-war recovery, they portrayed the other face of battle. Thanks to the Industrial Revolution and its subsequent advance in machinery technology, many of the soldiers had suffered from wounds related to gunnery and ammunition. With the endless bullets coming from both sides of the engagement, many men returned home with missing arms, legs, eyesight, hearing, or sanity. 
The scientific prowess at the time also birthed the use of mustard gas and other powerful chemicals that either left them with permanent breathing problems and compromised immune systems, or severely scarred and burned. World War I veterans whose facial skin was burned by gas and other substances were left with permanent scars that disfigured their faces. During recovery, a soldier would be called lucky if he could still see, breathe, or eat, and physical and emotional pain were considered unimportant matters. To return to as much normalcy as possible, the nurses and doctors at Walter Reed helped the veterans learn new skills with their changed bodies. Some men without an arm learned how to weld with a hook, while others, blinded by their injuries, studied braille and cane walking. These photographs show the two sides of the war. How Stalin's propaganda machine erased people from photographs. Although Photoshop was still decades away, Joseph Stalin doctored hundreds of photos to manipulate an entire state. In this dictator's Russia, you could be a top-ranking politician one day and completely wiped out of history the next. After rising to power in 1929, Stalin declared war on all Soviets that he considered tainted by their previous connections to any political movement before his dictatorship. For a decade, the leader terrorized his state, taking the lives of around 750,000 people that he deemed as a threat. During Stalin's campaign of political repression in the late 1930s, known as the Great Purges, the dictator often ordered to have his opponents disappear from pictures. He knew the value that photographs had for historical records and influencing the proletariat. Using hand-operated tools like scalpel, glue, paint, and airbrush, artistic Soviet publishing house employees, hired by the dictator himself, would make once famous political personalities vanish from photographs. This secret obsession with picture editing started an industry within the nation. The Soviets also enhanced Stalin's own photos to improve his pockmarked face's appearance, making him look like the ultimate comrade and the only true Lenin successor, while also inserting the Russian leader into other famous photos in history. On one occasion, they doctored an image from the Battle of Berlin in World War II to make it seem like two Soviet soldiers raised their flag over the bombed-out Reichstag building. This photo doctoring often made the artists go back to the past to change the historical records. When Stalin ordered the complete elimination of Leon Trotsky, once a top leading figure of the Communist Party, from all public photos, the painters spent hours manipulating hundreds of pictures one by one. Although photo editing today is mainly used to fix imperfections, photograph manipulation could become a political nightmare back then, and also a way to literally erase military opponents, tricking the innocent public into lies and propaganda. Hitler in Disguise As World War II neared its end in 1944, Allied intelligence officials worried that Adolf Hitler, the most recognizable man in the world, would flee Germany under disguise. In order to see what the dictator would look like without his trademark mustache and oily, side-slicked hair, the officials gave the order to reproduce his portrait as such. The OSS, Office of Strategic Services, an early version of the CIA, then hired New York's top makeup artist, Eddie Sens, to recreate and alter several portraits with different looks. The artist produced several versions of Adolf Hitler under a disguise, with his hair slicked back, without a beard, with other glasses, and even with a lot of hair. Although the photographs were supposed to be released after D-Day in June of 1944, they were never needed, and were ultimately shelved for decades. Still, in November of 1944, a Canadian newspaper published another set of mock-ups of Hitler, edited by a native artist. The article's header read, quote, Would you know Der Führer's face if he settled in Western Canada? As history would have it, instead of escaping, Hitler and his new wife, Eva Braun, took their own lives. Because his body was found weeks later by Smirsch, an umbrella organization for three different independent counterintelligence agencies in the Red Army, the comrades quickly smuggled the dictator before he could ever be found by the justice-seeking allies. When Stalin refused to immediately inform his generals about Hitler's body, there was worldwide speculation about his escape. An extraordinary claim surfaced about him fleeing to Argentina with Eva until he passed of old age. Even though these rumors were eventually debunked, they're still fantasized over today. During the 1990s, German news magazine Der Spiegel published photos of Sens's reimaginings of Hitler, causing worldwide outrage. The same images were later re-released by the United States National Archives with better resolution, finally admitting their involvement in this strange editing work. Thank you for watching my video. 
please like and subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels to watch more interesting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos.